Hi everyone, welcome back. I hope you're doing amazing. I'm going to be talking about preservative mistakes to avoid if you plan on making your skincare hair care products. Um, using preservatives correctly when you are formulating your um, skincare hair care products is a must and it is very necessary to understand how preservatives work and how to use them correctly. So I'm going to share some of these mistakes to avoid if you're new to making skincare hair care products or even if you are already making these products for yourself i'm going to share some tips um, that i use um, so let's get started and if this is your first time stopping by my name is esther and i make diy hair and skincare videos and i also sell my handmade products on my website as well as teaching online formulating classes everything i mentioned will be linked in the description box so let's jump right in what is a preservative a preservative is used to stop the growth of bacteria yeast and mold in your skin and hair care formulations so it is a must um, if you're making products that contain water or uh, products that will come in contact with water so when you're making water-based products so meaning like your um, cleansers your shampoos conditioners those are uh, products that contain water they absolutely need a preservative in them now if you're making products like your sugar scrubs um, body butter products that are mostly oils and plant butters you may not need a preservative um, something like a sugar scrub definitely recommended to use a preservative a traditional whipped body butter that only contains oils and plant butters you really do not need a preservative but you can add one um, for peace of mind and um, just to protect your product from bacterial contamination some things to consider um, a preservative is important for your water-based products to stop the growth of bacteria yeast and mold you want to choose a broad spectrum preservative so you want to choose one that's effective against all three so bacteria yeast and mold and then you want to choose the correct one for your specific formula if it's an oil-based or water-based formula because some preservatives can only work in water-based formulations and some can work in both water and oil based so you want to choose according to the product you're making the first mistake to avoid is using the wrong amount in your product so either you are under preserving or over preserving your product um, so i'm going to show you what i mean so if i go to a um, to an online supplier's website. Um, in this case, I'm using Lotion Crafter. Um, they are a really good online supplier. So I'm going to head over to their preservative section and I'm going to select a very popular preservative called Liquid Gemo Plus. So with any preservative, you want to make sure you're reading the info page because it has all the details, restrictions, about the preservative and then the formulation guide is the most important because it tells you how to use the preservative so in this case the usage rate recommended is 0.1 to 0.5 percent so you want to stay in this range um, if you go below 0.1 percent that means you're under preserving your product and if you go above 0.5%, that means you are over preserving your product. So you always want to stay in the range recommended by the supplier for any preservative that you are purchasing. Um, so keep that in mind. You cannot just use 0.5% for every preservative that you plan on using. So refer to the usage rate guidelines adding your preservative in the wrong phase 
So a lot of preservatives are sensitive to heat and hot temperatures. So if you add it in a hot temperature setting, you can um, degrade the preservative. Um, the hot temperature can cause the preservative to lose its potency, effectiveness. So it's always best to add most preservatives to a cooler temperature setting. If you look at um, Liquid Gemmel Plus, you'll see that it's heat sensitive and should only be added um, in the water phase or to an emulsion um, at a temperature of 122 degrees Fahrenheit or below. So that is the formulating guideline for Liquid Gemmel Plus. So whichever uh, preservative you plan on using, just look at the guidelines um, what the temperature guidelines are but as a general rule most preservatives are usually heat sensitive so when you make an emulsion like a cream a lotion because you're heating up your oil and water together um, it's going to be at a high temperature so you never want to add your preservative at that hot temperature the third mistake to avoid is not choosing a broad spectrum preservative. So a broad spectrum preservative is one that's effective against bacteria, yeast and mold. So you want to look out for that when you're buying a preservative. So I'm going to give you an example here. So on Lotion Crafter, in their preservative section, I'm going to look at Uxil K903. Um, so this is an EcoCert approved preservative. So if you look at it, it says it's a complete preservative system with a broad balanced spectrum. So it's effective against both um, gram positive and gram negative bacteria. But um, you just want to keep in mind uh, what you can use it in. You can use it in shower gel, shampoos, body washes, creams, lotions. But note that it's not suitable for anhydrous products. So I always say any preservative you plan on using in your formula, just head over to the supplier that sells it. Read the information, read the guidelines. So that way you're sure that you're buying the right one for your product. The next mistake to avoid is using a preservative in the wrong pH. So every preservative has a uh, pH range that it is effective in. So usually when you're buying a preservative uh, from a good supplier, all that information is there. It tells you what range the uh, preservative is effective. Um, so for Liquid Gemmo Plus, it is effective in a pH range from 3 to 8. So on Lotion Crafter, that's what the information states. So it's effective in a range of 3 to 8. So if I'm making a product and I want to use Liquid Jamo Plus, I'm going to keep that in mind. I'm going to keep that pH number in mind. And you also want to keep in mind that most skincare formulations, hair care formulations, they typically will stay in a range of 4.5 to 5.5 because that's the pH of our skin. So you want to keep that in mind, the pH of your skin, your hair, as well as the range of uh, effectiveness for a specific preservative. So in my example here, I was making a um, facial cleanser with actives and for that specific active, their pH range is if it's between four to five. So if I was using Liquid Jamo Plus, that would be perfectly fine because it works in a pH range of three to eight. The next mistake to avoid is not mixing properly or using the wrong equipment when you're making your products. So a lot of the time when you make products, um, you may not mix your preservative long enough. You have to think about the product you're making, how the preservative has to pretty much cover or mix into every inch of that formula. So you're making your lotions, your creams, your shampoos, whatever it is you're making, make sure that you are mixing, mixing, mixing long enough for a few minutes to get everything well blended, well combined. And certain products require equipment. If you're making an emulsion, so like a lotion, cream, 
anything that's combining water oil together a lot of time a lot of the time you need something that's going to agitate that mixture for lack of a better way of explaining it you need something that's going to really get in there and mix it properly so that's where when you need a, a stick blender an immersion blender for your emulsions now if you're making simple things like your cleansers your shampoos if you're making a small batch you can maybe stir by hand but you need to do that for several minutes or you can use a stirring machine an overhead stirrer or a mini stirrer but you need something that's going to mix your preservative properly and long enough so you want to do this for a few minutes at least the next mistake to avoid is adding fresh juices purees herbs to your finished product um, these ingredients are just a magnet for bacteria um, to thrive in your product so you want to avoid using these ingredients um, yes you can add extracts um, the cosmetic grade extracts you have them in pretty much every fruit vegetable uh, form you have carrot extract you have pineapple extract papaya extract green tea extracts so that would be the more stable form to use when you're formulating your products so things like your fresh juices herbs your fresh milk it's just going to cause serious bacteria contamination in your product yes i know that i've heard people say that oh they add all these things and their products are fine but the problem is the only sign of contamination that you can see with your eyes is mold you cannot see bacteria contamination with your eyes that is something that the lab has to test your product for but you cannot see bacteria contamination with your eyes so you really want to avoid using these ingredients that is just one of the main reasons you're going to have serious contamination in your finished product so always um, stick to the cosmetic grade um, uh, form of ingredients so something like aloe vera i never suggest using fresh aloe vera in hair skincare formulations especially if you plan on selling these products you want to stick with the cosmetic grade uh, form of these ingredients fresh ingredients can do well in cold processed soap because cold processed soap has a high ph so those ingredients are not going to go bad in the soap because of the high ph so i have two questions for you if you left uh, milk in your fridge um, opened for six months do you think it's going to stay fresh or it's going to go bad and my second question is if you left milk on your kitchen counter for six months would you drink the milk or use it in your skincare so just because you don't see contamination um, most of the time in your products does not mean that it's not contaminated with these fresh ingredients I'm going to show you how you can calculate your preservative and I'm also going to link my other preservative videos as well in the description box. Um, so this is just to show you how to do the calculation just in case you're not sure. Um, but this is the general formula, um, your, the usage rate percentage multiplied by your batch size. So this is going to be the same. The formula does not change. Um, so the other question I got was how do I know my batch size so your batch size is how much of a product you want to make that is your batch size so I have my bottles let's say I'm making a shampoo how much how many bottles do I want to fill so my example here I have 20 bottles of a shampoo and each bottle is eight ounces so my batch size is going to be 20 bottles multiplied by 8 ounces and that's going to be 160 ounces. So my batch size is 20 bottles multiplied by 8, 160, that is my batch size. And you can always convert to grams. There are so many converters online. Just go on Google and type 160 ounces to grams and that's going to give you the equivalent.
The usage rate for Liquid Jamo Plus is between 0.1 to 0.5 percent. So I'm going to use the, do the calculation at 0.5 percent. So I'm going to multiply my batch size of 160 ounces multiplied by 0.5 percent. Just as a reference, I always use my preservative at the maximum. So that's why I'm using it at 0.5%. And once I multiply both, I'm going to get 0.8 ounces. So if I'm making this batch size of 160 ounces for this shampoo, I'm going to weigh out 0.8 ounces of Liquid Jamo Plus preservative. So to convert to grams, which is what I prefer, you just run 160 ounces on the Google converter online and it's going to convert it. And this is going to be 4535.9 grams. And you follow the same process. You're just going to multiply that batch size by 0.5%. That is the usage rate for Liquid Jumbo Plus. And once you multiply that, you're going to end up with 22.67 grams. So if you were working in grams, you would weigh out 22.67 grams of Liquid Jumbo Plus. And I have some preservative examples. If you're looking for preservatives for your products, um, I have my list here. There are so many preservatives out there, but a lot of these preservatives are great for both water-based and oil-based formulation. So do your research on these preservatives if you plan on using any of them. Um, but I hope you found this video helpful, useful in your formulating journey. Um, let me know if you have any questions in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. As always, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for your support. Please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. And also don't forget to like this video and please turn on your notifications so you don't miss any new videos I upload. But thank you so much and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.